Good evening to everyone. He was asking me about my wife and how long I'd been married, and I told him we'd been happily married for 25 years. He started to write that down, and I said, well, 25 out of 30, that's not too bad, is it? I mean, actually, it's 30 years, I guess, and you'd have to ask her more about the happily part, but uh, she is in San Antonio, Texas right now, and I'd like to tell you she is really missing me, but my daughter bought a place, her and her husband down there, and it has their, they have their own pool. And so I know she's not missing me. But she did call me several times today. They found three snakes in the pool today. So I don't know if they're getting back in that water or not. But anyway, it's good to be with you. And uh, I can tell you this about me and my wife. We have discovered the secret to a happy marriage. Really have. Um, it's going out to eat twice a week. I go on Tuesdays and she goes on Fridays. And that, that seems to help us out a whole lot. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. It's something I look forward to each summer. And uh, I appreciate the congregation here your stand for the truth and the encouragement that you give to others. I want to encourage you to keep being the light in this community that you are and to keep living faithfully uh, for the Lord. I appreciate the subject that's been given to me. We're going to talk about entertainment. I'm not here tonight to try to be some kind of entertainment policeman. I'm not here to tell you what you can and, and cannot watch, the shows that you cannot watch and, and that kind of thing. You, you have to do that for yourself. I'm not in your homes. There's some spiritual discernment that we need to use when it comes to a, an issue like this, but it is certainly a large part of our culture, and there is great power when it comes to entertainment. You think about anything in this world that has great power, and there is always going to be potential for both great good and great evil. It's all in how you use it. We could take something as simple as fire, and you might say, oh, that's bad, fire's bad, we don't want fire. Really? You don't want any heat in the wintertime? You don't like to have your food cooked? It's how you use it. When it's out of control, it can cause a lot of trouble. But when we use it properly, it can do a great deal of good. And entertainment can be that way. The word entertainment is not in the Bible. The Bible doesn't talk about this subject directly. I think the only time that the word entertain is used is in the book of Hebrews where we're told to remember to entertain strangers. Don't forget to do that. But that's not the entertainment we're talking about. But it's certainly something that is part of our lives. And God means it for good. He means it to refresh us. And it can do that. And He means it to inspire us. And it can do that as well. So when it's used properly, it can be a very wholesome and pleasant thing. And there are many good things for us to watch, for us to listen to, things that can help us grow, that can teach us things about ourselves, about other peoples, uh, about history. There's so much that is good. But I don't have to tell you that there is also so much that is bad. I guess we could spend the time talking about those things, but... You know, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 12, Paul would write and say that it is a shame to talk about the things that they do in secret. Well, they're no longer in secret. They're right out in the open. And yet it's still a shame. And so I'm not going to bore you with that. But what I do want us to do is to ask ourselves some questions. Questions that I think can help us to look at the way that we consume and involve ourselves in entertainment. And make sure that we're doing this in a way that is acceptable to God, that pleases Him. 
And so with that in mind, I, I want us to look at a few questions. The first two might not be the first questions that you think of, but I do think they're important for us to consider. And the first one is this. How much time do I spend on entertainment? Now, you might be really quick to say, well, preacher, I, I don't do that. I just don't spend a lot of time on entertainment, watching that television or uh, at the movies or that kind. Well, hold on a moment. Let's really stop and, and think about it. How, how often is the television on in our homes? Oh, but I don't watch it. I understand you don't sit down maybe and watch it every minute, but how long is it on? What do you do when you get in the car? Why, we start it up. We, we don't even have to worry about turning on some kind of stereo system or radio. It's already on. It's just going to come on because we want entertained even while we're driving. How much time do you spend on the Internet? How much time do we spend on our phones? How much time do we spend playing video games? And on and on it can go with the different ways that we seek and can be entertained in our world today. And if you're not careful, all that can add up to a big hunk of time. In fact, entertainment is a time killer. You sit down and you may think, well, I'm just going to watch, you know, a little bit of news. And three hours later, you get up. You've watched the same news two times. It's just cycled all the way through, but you watched it. You know, there might just be something breaking. Or I'm just going to check my email on, on this phone or on my computer. And, and before you know it, three hours are gone. I'm going to sit down and play this video game. And, you know, a lot of gamers... If they don't have two, three, four hours to give to a game, they don't feel like it's even worth it. It can really use the time. And I think we ought to ask ourselves some questions about that. How does that compare to the time that I spend in Bible study? How does that compare to the time that I give to the Lord? Time I spend in prayer. Time I spend meditating on the Word of God. The Bible doesn't say a great deal about time, but it does let us know some things we need to keep in mind. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 and 16, we're told, See then that you walk circumspectly. That means carefully. Watch your step. Not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. That's the idea. Buy back time. That'd be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? Buy back some time. Can't do that. But this is an idiom that simply means use time wisely. And again, I'm not saying that every moment somebody uses on entertainment is foolish. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just asking how much time do we spend on entertainment? Really look at your life. And ask yourself that question. Here's the next one. And that is, how much money do I spend on entertainment? Oh, preacher, you, you don't have to worry about me there because I don't spend anything on entertainment. Really? How much is your cable bill? How much are you paying for that dish? How, many, how much do those TVs cost? How much do that, those TVs cost that you've got? How many do we have? All that equipment? surround sound and DVRs and Blu-ray players. and What about those computers and tablets and phones? How much those cost? Anybody here subscribe to anything like Netflix or go to Redbox and, and get a movie? Or maybe just go to the movies. Now, I have to tell you, I haven't been to a movie in a long time. I never dreamed that this would be me. My dad used to be like this. But I would talk, I remember as a, a teenager at home, talk about a movie that was at the theater, and he'd never heard of it. You don't know what's playing in the theater, and now that's me. I have no idea what is in the The last time I think I went to a movie, I saw the movie Elf. 
That's a long time. And I took my family. They were smaller. I took my money out, and the lady told me how much it was for a seat, and I said, I just want to sit in it. I don't want to take it home. But you know, the money can just rack up real fast. And we have to ask ourselves, is that being a good steward? Again, I'm not saying it's wrong to spend money on entertainment. Not at all. I'm just wanting us to examine ourselves. How much money do we spend? And think about this. How does that compare to what I give to the Lord? Why, $50 to go see Toby Keith in concert? That's a, that's a steal. I, I, give me four of those tickets. Put $50 in the collection plate? What do you mean? How come it looks so small one place and so big the other? You see, we want to be good stewards. How much money do I really spend on, on entertainment? Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 begins, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What's the most valuable thing in your house? What have we spent the most money on? And a lot of times it's something involving entertainment. Again, just observations, just wanting us to ask questions. Because we're accountable to God for this. Remember in Matthew 25, there's the parable of the talents. Do you remember what those talents were? They weren't abilities, were they? Everybody go like this. No, they, they weren't abilities. It was amounts of money. A talent was a large sum of money. And when the master came back, what happened? Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. There was an accounting that took place. Folks, don't you know? that you and I are responsible for how we use what God has placed in our hands. And so how much money am I spending? How much time am I spending on entertainment? Some questions that maybe we really don't think about very much. Here's probably the one that, that we think about the most when it comes to this idea of entertainment, and that is what kind of influence does entertainment have on me and my family? You know, we're, we're taking this in. So what's it doing to me? And it's, it's interesting to me. You can read about this. There's violence on TV. There's uh, immorality on TV. There's terrible language on... And when it comes to most of those things, the producers of that want to say these things really don't have an effect upon people who watch them. In particular, violence. Or you ought to be able they could watch there's no correlation between an escalation in violence in the home or in society, in our schools, and watching violence on TV. And then those same people will turn around and charge companies millions for a 30-second spot to advertise their product. And you mean to say it doesn't have any effect on them? Why are they doing that then if it doesn't affect them? If it doesn't make them want to go to KFC the next time they're hungry? Or if it doesn't want them to get them to buy this kind of car or call this company for this product or that? If it doesn't affect them, why are they advertising it? You see, it just doesn't make sense. There is an effect. And we need to guard against those evil things. There's some ideas that we need to keep in mind as we think about this. And when we think about entertainment, one of the things that you'll see is that sin is, is glorified. And you look at a picture like this, a lot of people would say, I wonder what he's talking about. Sin is good. We just take for granted that people are going to drink. 
And that just becomes so accepted. That's what adults do, right? I mean, they sit down, they get themselves some wine or some beer or whatever it is, and, and they enjoy their evening. That, that just got to be part of it. It's so common, most people wouldn't even notice it. But sin is something that's glorified. It, it's the way that, that we're supposed to be living, is what the world says. That's what really living is. And so, you know, if you want to gamble, then you, you go do that. You want to have a night on the town, you go out and you party it up. You want to be involved in drugs, there's no problem with that. You've got two consenting adults, they can do whatever they want to do. And, and that's okay. And that's the message. Sometimes it's subtle. A lot of times they don't come out and just say those words. It's just portrayed for us. This is acceptable. This is okay. This is all right. And if you don't accept it, if you're not tolerant of this, you're the one with the problem, not those that are involved in sin. And so sin is something that, that's glorified. And I think you and I need to be very careful and guard our hearts against consuming this, taking this stuff in. In Romans chapter 1, there's a listing of, of all the things that happen when people forget about God and when they turn their back on Him, don't want to retain Him in their knowledge. The very last verse, verse 32 of that chapter says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And you might say, well, preacher, I'm not doing those. Th okay, I'm just, are we taking pleasure in them that do them? And so we want to be careful. Sin is, can be glorified in entertainment. And that, that's not what I want to take part in. I, I don't want to view that. I, I don't want my family to view that. Look at this verse. If you don't remember any other verse, I hope you'll remember this one tonight. Psalm 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Isn't that a good thought? I'll set no wicked thing before my eyes. We had our vacation Bible school a couple weeks ago. And I get the honor of, of leading the children in the singing. I love that. They're so excited. Those children's songs... I hope you never stop singing them. One in particular, as we think about our subject tonight, is that little song that says, Watch your eyes, watch your eyes, what they see. Watch your ears, watch your ears, what they hear. There's a father up above looking down in tender love. So you watch your eyes, you watch your ears. You watch what you take in. I will set no evil or no wicked thing before mine eyes. Here's another idea. With our songs, I probably don't think about it quite as much as when we're talking about entertainment. That's, that's movies, that's television, right? But singing, that, that, that's a big part of entertainment in our world. And I'll be honest with you, I only know one of the people that's up there. I know Bruno Mars. He's the last guy. Uh, and I've heard him before, and I like some of the songs that he sings. I went to the library. I checked out one of his CDs. I had to take it back right away because it was vulgar. I, he sings a couple songs, just beautiful, about love. I, songs can be so thrilling, so encouraging. They can pick us up, and you can keep those songs with you. Boy, there can be some awful ones too. You know, really what I thought to do, and I started to do this on, on Monday, I started working and I, I thought, here's what I'll do. I'm going to take the top ten songs from this week, billboard charts, and I'm going to get the words, the lyrics, and I'll put them up here and we'll just read them. And then I did that for four or five songs and I thought, I'd be too embarrassed to read them to you. I don't want you to see them, let alone hear them. 
It's awful. That's not every song. I, I'm not saying that. And somebody's saying, well, you know what? That, that's pop music. That country music. You don't have to worry. Oh, it can be worse. You can understand what they're saying in country music. And, and the message can be just as bad. Now, again, I'm not trying to condemn everyone or every song or anything like that. I'm just trying to say there's a glorification of sin through entertainment. Hasn't always been that way. I was looking at a code. It was the code for movies and television from 1930 to 1968. And whoever had put this out, those powers to, in charge, had things in there like we need to remember that this is a powerful medium and that the goal is to build up. It's to, to strengthen. So you're not to have anything negative about the country in these programs. You're not to have any profanity. There's not to be any vulgarity. And all these matters are listed and they're talked about how they are to be treated. Many of them, you don't go there. Well, that world's gone. And it's been gone for a long time. And so we want to be careful about how this is influencing us. The goal really seems to be acceptance. And if you can't make out what that is, that's two women getting married. I didn't want to show their faces. I started to get the picture from and you've probably seen this, Zales, they have a, an ad out there. I don't know what they call it, but they're selling their jewelry. And in that is a depiction of two women getting married. I'll, they didn't have to worry about me buying anything anyway, but I'm not going there, even if I had the money. But again, they're not... Tr the, the entertainment industry isn't trying to say, we, we want to turn all of you into this. That, that's not their goal. You may never do many of the things that are portrayed on television or in the movies or, or you hear in songs. But every time we see them, every time we hear them, we get desensitized just a little bit more first time you see something it can be so shocking that's awful how can they we're outraged and then just you know and maybe it's shown in a funny kind of sit we'll laugh at it and it's not long before it's just the way things are we'll just accept it and don't think they're going to stop they're always going to keep pushing because they believe there's no limits now again, I know when I do that, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everyone together. I, I'm sure that in the entertainment industry, there are some who don't have that kind of thinking, but there are many more who do. And so we've got to be on guard against this and this influence upon us. Entertainment has a numbing effect. It's called a boob tube for a reason. You sit down in front of it, and your mind just kind of clicks off. You stop really thinking about anything else a lot of times. And maybe that's why it's so uh, appealing to us. We're trying to get away, escape for a little while. And so we just, we just quit thinking. And not only thinking about what's going on in the world, but we quit thinking for ourselves. You ever watch when the president's going to talk? Doesn't matter who the president is. The networks get on, and they're going to tell you what he's going to say. Then they let him say it, and then afterwards they have to tell you what he said. Just so you get it. Because you can't think for yourself. You just let us do the thinking for you. And boy, haven't they had an effect on our world. Things have changed in the last 50 years. Yeah. What's been a large contributing factor to that? The entertainment industry. Powerful medium. 
power for good. Yeah, but there's also a lot of power for evil. You know, it causes us to stop really looking at the things we need to look at. In 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, we're told, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Examine yourself. We don't like to do that sometimes. You know, the one person you can never get away from is yourself. People are having trouble. They say, go on vacation. Well, that's okay, but the problems that you have, they, they go with you. But entertainment has a way, at least for a little bit, of keeping us from really thinking about and, and we can't hardly stand that. The devil doesn't want us thinking about ourselves as far as trying to improve ourselves or trying to think on the things of God. He, he doesn't want you spending time meditating on God's word or time in prayer. He, he wants every minute filled with entertainment. And boy, we've bought into that. It's not, you know, probably 25 years ago if I were preaching this, I could talk about television and movies and songs. Is that how we consume entertainment today? Is that the only way? Why, of course not. You can't even talk to people that you see out because no one will look at you. Everybody walks looking at their phone. They've got to watch a show while they're, or, or play a game while they're walking. It, it's almost absurd. In Psalm 139, verse 23, we're told, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Soul searching. We need to do that from time to time. And the entertainment industry says, no, you don't. You're okay no matter what you do. Well, here's another problem. That is... People accept what they see and hear as truth. They see it on television, hear it on the radio. They, it's truth. It's gospel. It doesn't have to be verified. Just what somebody asked me the other day, hey, have you ever watched that show Ancient Aliens? No, I have not. I ought to get a check mark for that. And if that's one of your favorites, I'm sorry, but. I don't believe in aliens. I'll probably get zapped here in just a minute. But, <laughs> but you know, Jesus came to the earth. He came to save us. He didn't go to any other planet or anything like that. And we've got all... Oh, but you put a good conspiracy together? Oh, we've got a program. We know who killed JFK. We've seen Bigfoot. We, we've, got, we've got the abominable snowman. You know, and, and on and on. And reality TV, that's got so big. Let me tell you something. There's nothing real about reality TV. Do you understand that? There's really not. The only reason it's on is because it's cheap for the networks and people will still watch. That's it. You have a show that has stars in it. you got to pay them a million dollars an episode. You say, we'll give the winner of this contest a million dollars, and people will go crazy, and they'll do it for free. And they just keep raking in the dough, and people still watch. But we'll buy anything. Now, where this really gets dangerous is when they start pushing evolution. Entertainment industry do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I watched a program yesterday, and I, I, I enjoy programs about nature. This was on Nat Geo, and, and I was watching this about uh, uh, deadly animals from Africa. Every now and then, they would put that little bit in there. 65 million years ago billion years ago. This crocodile has hardly evolved at all in 65 billion years. You know, and I thought, why don't the wildebeest evolve to build a bridge instead of go across that river where the crocodile are? I mean, 65 billion years, you'd think they could figure that out. 
It's ridiculous, but it's not just something like a documentary like that. It's in, it's in the comedies that we watch. It's even in our little children's programs. PBS putting this out. And people buy it because they heard it on television. And then there's this part. It gives us the wrong kind of heroes. Someone like this person can get awards. She may be a good talk show host or something, whatever it is. I, I have no idea because I refuse to watch anything like that. But it's sad. You watch something, and my wife and I will watch it, and I'll tell my son, I found a program I like. He'll say, you know he's homosexual, don't you? No, I didn't. But they love to push that forth. They got their agendas. And the kind of heroes that entertainment gives us, not many that we can look at and say, I, I hope I have a kid that turns out like that. You know, the right kinds of heroes are found in the Word of God. Let me ask you, do you know who this is talking about? Philippians chapter 2 and verses 29 to 30. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness and hold such in reputation... Because for the work of Christ he was nigh unto death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. You know who that is? It's a fellow by the name of Epaphroditus. You don't read about him a lot in the Bible, but he almost lost his life for the cause of Christ. And Paul writes and says, you hold such in reputation. Let these men be your heroes. These women, look to elders and deacons in the church, your Bible class teachers, preachers of the gospel, fellow Christians being examples for each other. Have the right kinds of heroes. Well, here's one more question for us. And that is, how does entertainment affect my interactions with others? Again, we probably don't think about this aspect of it, but... The reason I wanted to bring it up is because the way that we consume entertainment, it keeps us from interacting with each other. Here's a guy who's so into this ball game or whatever it is, he doesn't hear what his wife's saying. Now, I know that never happens to any of you. I know that couldn't happen. But, you know, it, we just get so involved. And entertainment is something that's very individualistic. Gone are the days where there's one TV in a home and everybody sits around and watches it together. Now we all got to watch our own, whatever program it is. Play our own game. Be on our own computer, our own phone. It's, it's very individualistic. I remember my son, and again, I'm not saying you can't do these things. My son would play a video game and he'd come in and say, Dad, come watch me. You talk about boring. You think going to a Little League game and watching them run around the bases the wrong way. I mean, that. It, try watching them play a video game. That's, I have no idea why anyone would want to watch someone else do that. But, you know, it, it's just the nature of it. And so it keeps us separated. It keeps me in the house. How many of you know your neighbors? You know their names first and last? How about the people across the street? How often do we interact? Anybody got a front porch anymore? Don't build a house with them anymore. I think my house, and it just happened to be the one that we bought, is the only house on our block that has a front porch. People aren't out and about. We're so closed off. Don't you know the devil loves that? Don't interact with anyone else. You might share the gospel with them. We can't have you doing that. Stay in your house. I'll entertain you. It makes me leery of others. I've seen that Hawaii Five-O show. I tell you, if that many people get killed in Hawaii, I never want to go there. I mean, they're dropping like flies. 
If it's that violent, I, I don't ever want to go. It, it makes people live. We went, my wife and I, went to Niagara Falls. Never had been. Last year we went. Kids sent us there. And they brought us back too. But they, We were in New York. First time we'd ever been in New York. That's a long, where Niagara Falls is, is a long way from New York City. But just because we were in the state of New York, my wife was scared to death. She just knew we were going to get mugged. You know, and, and of course I had to every now and then just act like I was taking off running and she would have to try and run too, you know. And it, so leer, because of what we've seen on TV. You don't want to end up on Law and Order. But we, we get, we're leery of each other. And it takes opportunities, takes away opportunities to share the gospel. Here's that picture of everybody on their phone. And you see this all the time. People will be sitting at lunch together, and you might be the one person not on the phone. Well, poor you. You're not going to have anyone to talk to because everybody's got to check whatever this little device is showing us and telling us. No one wants to talk, really get to know each other and let each other know we care and share the gospel. Well, those are some negative things, but we've got just a couple more minutes. Let's, let's talk about some of this. What can we do? I'd like to be able to tell you we can change the whole thing. We can make it, we, we can cleanse the airways of all the sinful things and we can make it wholesome and we can, I really don't know how you do that. Entertainment has this philosophy, you give the people what they want and as long as people are willing to pay and they say that's what they want, they're going to be people who will give it to them. And evidently, that's what's happening. And so I don't know how we change it. You can write your letters or emails to companies and programs and stations, and, and I hope that they'll do some good. But in the meantime, what else can we do? What about us as an individual in our homes? What can we do? Well, let's examine ourselves. We looked at that verse earlier that talked about it, but let's make sure the way that I'm consuming entertainment, the way I involve myself in entertainment is a godly way. And this may be drastic, but I believe it's what the Bible teaches. Friend, if you're not using some device, some kind of entertainment in a wholesome way, get rid of it. You can say amen when you want to. You get rid of it. Look at this in Matthew 5, verses 29 and 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and, that not, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. He's not literally talking about cutting off members of the body, but he is saying if there's something that's going to keep you from heaven, get rid of it. I know there's going to be a lot of people in heaven who never watched television, who never had a computer or a phone. I don't want to miss heaven over those things. Do you? I want to examine myself. How am I using it? And you that are parents and grandparents, you make sure you know what your children are seeing and hearing. I grew up in a day when my dad would put in an eight-track tape and we'd listen to the Statler brothers for the next four hours in the car. I, I know all their songs. Johnny Horton and whoever else he had, you know. Today... You ride in a car with your family, every person in the car will be listening to their own music, their own thing. Do you know what your children are listening to? What's going in their earphones? 
what they're seeing on their computers, what's on their phones. I know that children are going to say, teens are going to say, it's mine. You don't have a right. Yes, you do. Who bought it for them? Who's paying for it? Who's responsible for them? You do. They'll protest. You do it anyway. And if they're not using it property, properly, they lose it. They're not going to like that either. I've seen them. They've come to church on Wednesday night, and I'll see one of them pouting, and I'll say, what happened, Sarah? Well, grandma took my phone for a month. Good for your grandma. But let's make sure we examine ourselves. Here's the next thing, and this is great. Again, I'm not trying to say, you, you, preacher said we've got to throw the, the coffee pot through the TV. I didn't say that. You can become your own programmer. You're not at the mercy anymore of the networks. You go home and, and there's nothing on. We've got DVRs. We've got YouTube. We've got all this opportunity to be your own programmer. You don't have to just listen to whatever DJ is playing on the radio. You can put your own memory stick together. You can be your own programmer. And I know some of you might say, well, I don't know how to do that stuff. Ask your grandkids. I guarantee you they know and they will be happy to show you how. It's really not that hard and honestly, they'll do it for you. But you can, you can watch what you want. I can watch Andy Griffith anytime I want to. Isn't that wonderful? I, best show in the whole world. And I can watch it anytime I want to. You know, you, you have a favorite actor or actress? You, they're old enough, you, you can watch their movies for free for any time. I can hear every now I haven't heard John Denver sing in a long time. I know why he's not with us anymore, but, you know, it, um, I just... I just put it on my computer. Listened here, almost heaven, West Virginia. Grandma's feather bed. You know, I mean, it just, you can, you can be your own programmer. You don't have to worry about this other stuff. I'm not going to watch that. I'll watch what I want. And I'll make sure that it's wholesome and that it's God approved. Then, Let's just do this. Let's let our entertainment do what it was designed to do. Not to consume all our time and all our money. Not to lead us astray. Not to make us go along with culture and, and the world and all that kind of stuff. Let's let it refresh us from time to time. And let's let it inspire us. It can do that. I hear that rocky music. I want to go run up some steps. You know, I just, it can do that to us. It can be a good, if you use it properly. It's not the end all of all, it, it, it can't be. We're not here just to entertain ourselves. We're here to serve our God. And we're here to prepare to go to heaven. Let's not let something like entertainment stand in our way. Appreciate you listening to me. I hope you'll think about it. Again, I'm not trying to tell you, uh, you've got to watch this, you can't watch. I, you've got to examine yourselves. You've got to make some decisions. Let's just make sure we use those things properly. You know, last year, my, my mom, for her birthday, she got something from her granddaughter. My niece Carly, she got a kit that was called 23 in Me. Has anybody ever done that? Some of you have, maybe you've heard of it. It is a DNA testing thing. Tells you where you came from. And she was excited about this. And I told her, Mom, you don't probably want to know where we came from, you know. But, but she sent it away and, and she got it back and she was so excited. And, 
and my mom and my dad both are from southern West Virginia, and I told her, I said, Mom, it's going to come back, and it's going to say 100% hillbilly. That, that's what it's going to say. But she wasn't deterred, and she got it, and she, it, it said she was mostly Western European, 25% Irish, and about 13% was unknown. And I was telling somebody about that when I went to visit them at the hospital. And uh, I, I told them about telling my mom that, you know, it, it's probably 100% hillbilly. I just wanted to cheer them up, thought they'd laugh a little bit like you did a minute ago. And, and so I, I told them that. And the lady who, whose daughter was ill, she was standing there, and she said to me, oh, I don't care where I came from. I just care about where I'm going. And I told her, that'll preach. What about you? You might be interested in knowing where you came from. I understand that. Everybody gets curious once in a while. Want to know a little bit about genealogy and that kind of thing. No problem there. But I love that answer. I just care about where I'm going. And I want to ask you tonight, where are you going? If you're not on your way to heaven, you need to make a change. And you can do that tonight by coming to Christ in obedience. Put them on in baptism for the remission of your sins. Become a member of the Lord's church. He'll add you to his body when you obey his will. And if you're here tonight and you haven't yet obeyed the gospel, or if you have and, and you've fallen away, will you come back? God lets that happen, you know. He lets us return. And we'd love to pray with you and for you. So will you think about that? Not to be worried so much about where we came from. I just want to know where I'm going.